Hello students, I'm Himani Sharma, your UGC Net Educator in this new YouTube video. In the concept series that we have brought forth for you, I am going to introduce a new writer, right? So today we will be talking about a prominent novelist, short story writer, Mr. Mulkraj Anand. In the previous video, we talked about Bankim Chandra Chatterjee and there were certain facts and we talked about how even we talked about that Vande Mataram was something which was there in his novel Anandmat, which was written in Bengali, right? And Rajmohan's wife was his only and only English published novel, right? So in today's video, bringing those things, you know, keeping those things aside, we are going to talk about a new writer that is Mulkrajan. So let's just jump and see. Mulk Rajanand was born in the year 1905 and he died in the year 2004. So first of all, he was born in Pakistan. He was born in Peshawar, right? So we'll talk about that as well. And in 2004, when he passed away, he passed away in Pune, correct? So born in Peshawar, Pakistan, which is a, you know, fact that you all should be knowing if getting introduced to a new writer. Then he is the author of novel, short stories, essays, which are written in English. First of all, one more thing to note down here is that he is known as a person who is considered the founding father or the three pillars that we say when we talk about the Indian novels. In the previous lecture, we talked about that how novel as an art form can be something which can be provoking for a reader to take certain steps to do certain changes, right? So, in this, he was known as the founding father and was one of the three pillars of the Indo-English novel, along with whom? Mulk Rajanand along with Raja Rao and R.K. Narayan. The two writers who are famous, one is famous for his Gantapura right and the other one famous for his novel Swami and Friends, The Guide. We will be bringing forward and talking about these two writers as well in some other video in detail. So bringing forward uh, the other facts that I have here, known for his realistic and sympathetic portrayal of the poor. So if you read, if you come across even the summaries of the works of Mulk Rajanand, you will see that how he has tried to talk about the poor, the untouchables, right? The ones who were the marginalized section of the society, right? How? Because of the fact that India was stratified, was divided into different classes, groups, even in today for that matter. He talked about those very things and in a realistic manner with no fictional changes. Of course, there were characters which were introduced in his novels, but most of the time, the realistic portrayal of what was there in the society, right, that was shown in his novels and works. He was the one who was the founder of a magazine named Marg, in which, like we, if we translate this very word into English, it is known as pathway. So what kind of pathway was he considering? He was considering the pathway of art, correct? So a magazine of art. Also, he addressed the question of language and the indigenous experience. Indigenous experience, here we are talking about the Indian experience of how people were being treated. People of the marginalized, uh, you know, societies were discriminated against. We have talked about Mark. We have talked about how he was considered the one of the three pillars along with Raja Rao and R.K. Narayan. He was awarded with the third, you know, prominent gallantry award in India that is known as Padma Bhushan. And when was it awarded to him? In the year 1967. You should know the awards which are given to certain writers. And of course, he was also given the Sahitya Academy Award. For what? For his novel, The Morning Face. And in the year 1971. So note these things down while watching the concepts videos, right? One of the members of the Progressive, Writer, Progressive Writers Association, Progressive Writers Association was something which was introduced, which was made, which was a group of different, different writers 
who are coming from different sects of societies together to talk about or to bring some kind of revolution. Like in Mulkraj Anand, in Anand's novels, we see, Anand's works, we see that how marginalized people were being treated, right? So he was addressing that very thing that how discrimination should not be there when we talk about anything in our society. So this particular writer's association was a group of several writers, even including Ismat Chuktai, Sadat Hansan, uh, Hassan Manto, right? So this very thing. Now other facts that we have. Imbibed James Joyce's idea of stream of consciousness, a very important thing. And he felt that the novel should not press the inner monologue beyond a certain point so that humanness may remain a variable factor in the situation. This is a famous quote by R.K. Anand, you know, by Anand, Mulkraj Anand and how he talks about that stream of consciousness in his novels, we see that it is a technique which is used by him. During the Second World War, an important fact here again, he worked as a broadcaster and a script writer for BBC as well, right, in London. So he was the one who went to London, was a person who was broadcasting certain things, certain scripts, right, for BBC in London. Then coming to the first novel written by Mulkraj Anand is Untouchable. It was published in the year 1935 and is his first novel, correct, exposed the dehumanizing contradictions and systematic operations. Now, why do we say systematic operations? Just because of the fact that through the ancient eras, these very things have been conditioned. These things have, these things, what these things I'm talking about? The caste system, the discrimination between creed, caste, sex, gender, etc. All these things have been prevalent from multiple times, right, since eras and how they are spread systematically and how people are oppressed in a systematic manner is what he talks about, right? So, where is it set? Fictional Indian town of Bulesha, correct? This is where Untouchable is set. In, it is a story of a single day in the life of Bakha, a sweeper boy. So, we'll talk about certain characters here in the next slide. We'll talk about a little overview of the stories that he has written, right? Full summaries, you are supposed to read on your own. Coming back here again, that Bakha was a sweeper and this is the story of one day of his life, right? Who accidentally meets a member of a higher caste. And of course, this thing, this very novel gained or made Anand to have the title that is India's Charles Dickens. Now, why was he known as India's Charles Dickens? Because of the fact that he was portraying the plight of the people in a realistic manner, just like Dickens. So, if we talk about realism, realism tells us to show things as they are. Dickens was doing that in his novels as well. So was Anand. That's why Anand was compared to Dickens and called India's Charles Dickens, right? The introduction. Now, this question has been asked in the net examination and various set examinations as well. So, a very, very prominent fact to note down here is the introduction of the novel Untouchable was written by E.M. Foster whom he, that Anand, met while working on T.S. Eliot's magazine, right, which was known as Criterion. So, Eliot's magazine was Criterion, Anand was working there and there he met E.M. Forster and then E.M. Forster gave the introduction, wrote the introduction for this very novel known as The Untouchable, right? Next, in his introduction, Foster wrote, what did he say about the novel? Avoiding rhetoric and circumlocution, this book, that is untouchable, has gone straight to the hearts of the subject and purified it. Because Anand talked about certain things as they were, right? And Foster was saying that how without the use of any kind of, you know, uh, language which is really descriptive, language which is very you know elaborative he had kept the language really simple he had kept the language really straight and through that very thing he has reached to the heart of a reader so whosoever will read it will feel the story on their own as well so anand was also prominent for using hindi and punjabi idioms in his 
English works as well. To talk about to bringing the vernacular in the English language because of course through the certain you know idioms which are there in English if we talk about them in English right. So those things make if a person is reading and if I belonging from Punjab I am reading a novel written by him. So I will be reading certain idioms and I will get an idea of what he was trying to say. So to keep the touch of reality there. He kept using Hindi and Punjabi idioms. Has the appearance of Mahatma Gandhi? This was also a question asked in net. Right? So, this very prominent novel has the character as Mahatma Gandhi. So, his appearance is there. So, this is a, one of the covers of the book by Mulkraj Anand that is untouchable. Now, characters in this very particular novel that we have. Number one, the protagonist is. Baha, who is an 18 year old boy who is a sweeper who cleans the toilet like right the latrines etc which were there in that very time and Lakha on the other hand is the one who is the father of Baha correct so Baha being the son of Lakha Lakha is a person who is really lazy abusive uh, you know parent and he wants to take gain right out of there and takes advantage of his children and including Bakha as well. So, we have the appearance of Gandhi and Kasturba Gandhi as well. So, it tells us that how the life of a sweeper boy is there that they are supposed to clean the toilets of the higher caste because at that point of time it was a job because no toilets were introduced in India and especially the villages. So, uh, the people of the lower caste were given these very duties to come and clean the you know toilets of whom the higher caste people, right? So, one day, Lakha wakes Baha up, right? And scold him to go and clean the toilet of people, right? The higher caste people. And eventually, Baha comes to know that Mahatma Gandhi has come to his village to give a speech. So, Gandhi comes, he gives, he delivers his speech, he leaves. After that, there are two people and Kasturba Gandhi is the one who accompanies Mahatma Gandhi. Right. So, she was also one of the prominent members in reality as well who was, you know, giving this very point of view to introduce the toilet system in India. Correct. For the hygiene, the cleanliness of people. So, what were they doing? Gandhi delivered a speech. He left. Baka was there who listened to that very speech and he was also elated by the fact. Right. And now what happened was that two people are the ones who are presenting contradictory opinions later on in the no novel by the end and at the conclusion, right? So, one of them also says and Baka feels now, Baka feels elated by the fact that now a new machine will be developed which will get him rid of cleaning the toilets. What was that, that machine? Toilets, right? Which will get cleaned on their own. So, they will not have to go and clean the toilet. So, the plight of a lower caste person, right, the plight of the lower caste people per se, the sweepers who were working to clean the toilets is shown and how even this minor thing, which was a big thing at that point of time, to introduce the toilet system in India, right. So, this is what is the overview of the novel Untouchable. Next, we have the second political novel written by Anand, that is Cooley, right. Second political novel set in Bilaspur near Kangra Hills, right? And it narrates the adventures of a character named Munno who is an orphan boy. So, his parents have died and it aims to awaken the awareness of the plight of the underclass. So, you see that even in the introductory slides how I told you that it was Anand who was trying to talk about the marginalized the ones, the, sec, uh, the sect of the society which was neglected, right? So, here in this novel is the same thing. Now, this is the first page of Mulkraj Anand's novel, right, Kuli. Now, the characters of Kuli, what do we have in here? First of all, we have Munno. Munno is a 14-year orphaned boy who later on dies of tuberculosis. So, first of all, this was his age, he was living with his uncle Dayaram and aunt Gujri, right? So, with them he used to live. Now, what happens is that when he is 14 years old, Dayaram thinks that he is just being a nuisance. 
munno is just being a nuisance in his house and she now he is old enough to go and get himself a work so he is the one who is looking for a job now and it is dayaram who gets munno a job so you see how the child labor was there correct and then we have another character mrs may main warring about which we will be about whom we will be talking about that what was she and how was she dealing with it so now coming on to what were the different different types of the jobs done by mun and he was the one who keeps on traveling in search of a job because of the fact that he wants to earn something first of all he was forcibly you know the one who was offered a job who was forcibly given basically a job of a house servant in an accountant's house right later on he works in a chutney factory and the third time when he is lost etc he works in a massive cotton mill factory which is owned by the british and where he is known as a kuli not only he but there are other people other uh, laborers which are known as coolies now at that point of time kuli by used by the britishers was a derogatory term at that point of time right and then later on the last job he did was a rickshaw puller a rickshaw puller of whom a rickshaw puller of mrs may main ward now one day what happens is that when he runs from this very job of a cotton mill factory where he was a kuli he is running and then he is hit by mrs main um, may main ward right her car hits him now what happens is that she feels really guilty she is a half indian woman and now she feels guilty that what have i done so he does not die of course he faces an accident he is brought to her house mrs main warring's house and there he is given a job of a rickshaw puller so wherever mrs main warring had to go it was munno who was doing who was pulling the rickshaw of mrs main warring and later on he is diagnosed with tuberculosis and he dies the next year when he turns 15 so even after the attempts of mrs main warring to bring her, you know him in her home to save him because she hit him with the car right he dies and how he was not even provided with any kind of treatment of course because of the fact that he kept on suffering for a job looking for a job looking for employment and at that point of time employment was such a big task for the undercaste people next is the third important novel that we have two leaves and a bud which was published in the year 1930 seven set in a village near hosharpur in punjab and it is a tale of a an exploited peasant gangu who is killed while trying to protect his daughter from being raped by a british colonial officer we will talk about the characters later on in the next slide as well so you got the idea what the novel is all about and it deals with the wretched plight of how the peasants were being dealt with in india at the colonial you know time and how this is a story of how the farmers the peasants from especially punjab were you know told that you will be earning more in assam or assam what do you want to call it right so you are supposed to come and work in a tea plantation in assam because assam is known for tea of course tea leaves etc so out of getting paid more it is gangu who with his wife and daughter and uh, you know a son he leaves punjab he leaves hosharpur and moves to assam right the major theme is the economic exploitation of the workers by colonialists or the capitalists so of course this tea plantation is the one which belongs to the british officials first page the cover two leaves and a bud now first character gangu a middle aged farmer or a peasant sajni is gangu's wife who dies later on of malaria and he is unable to afford for her treatment as well Leela and Buddhu are the children. So Leela is the daughter. Buddhu is the son of Gangu and Sachin. Reggie is the colonial officer who assaults Leela 
and because of the fact that meanwhile in the novel in the middle of the novel sajni dies of malaria now gango is left with his two children leela and buddhu and now what happens is that one day leela is you know the one who is getting the leaves in the plantation you know and plucking the tree, you know leaves from the plantation doing her job the british official reggy he comes and tries to assault her now what happens is that gangu tries to save his daughter to get by you know for the rape etc to save her from getting raped by the officer named reggy and he reggy later on kills gangu as well correct so the plight of how the farmers even if they were brought how they were treated how killings of the uh, smaller class of people as well were really common for for the britishers at that point of time a quote from this very novel i suppose it was in our kismat so you see anand's use of these very little little phrases words to um, put emphasis on the realness of the words but at home it was like a prison in hosharpur it was like a prison and here it is slightly worse first water afterwards mire this prison has no bars but still they were feeling that they are caught in between right this prison has no bars but it is nevertheless an unbreakable jail because you cannot run right the chaukidars again an indian word the hindi word the chaukidars keep guard over the plantation the tea plantation of assam and they bring you back if you should run so they cannot even escape from the plantation and how they had to stay there that was a condition mandate for them to stay there and provide for their families least provide there for their families but rather work more for the britishers next is other important novels by anand are the village across the black waters the sword and the sickle and especially these three books are considered a trilogy so an important fact to note down on your notebooks right and private life of an indian prince is somewhere autobiographical in nature so it has certain elements which are there from anand's personal life as well this is the trilogy that i was talking about the village across the black waters and the sword and the sickle there was also one novel which was supposed to be published in a seven volume and it was supposed to be autobiographical out of which only four were published by anand and the rest of them were un incompleted or unfinished right so the four four which were completed are seven summers morning face which won him the sahitya academy award right confession of a lover and the bubble these four parts were written and three parts were left unfinished correct now certain pyqs from the net you know examination that i have here for you which are related to anand the first question is after independence anand wrote a number of semi autobiographical works to narrate chunks of his own life that that's why a little fictional that is why it is semi autobiographical right through a fictional persona the name he gave this persona is the answer to this very question is option b that is krishan chandar was the character which appeared frequently in his semi autobiographical novels which was related which was somewhat similar to anand right then we have match list 1 with list 2 the answer to this question is option c that is for one we have three so mulk raj anand we already know that he wrote kuli for two option we have two catherine shakespeare written by raja rao right for three we have one prem chandra wrote prem ashram and girish karnad wrote nagamandala correct Next question from among the following identify the two indian english authors who received appreciation and encouragement from their british counterparts the answer to this very question is option c that is one option 1 and option 3 mulk rajanand 
who was the one who received you know some kind of appreciation from em foster we have done that in the previous slides as well right em foster was the one who wrote the introduction to the uh, the novel untouchable and rk narayan also was the one who was appreciated by graham green when i will be bringing forth the slides related to rk narayan we'll be talking about about how and about what by rk narayan was the one thing that graham green appreciated or like correct so we talked about anand em foster here and then which of the following are the leading characters in the novels written by anand we have done three prominent novels i have talked about the writer you know the characters which are there so i hope you all are identified to you know identify these very things the answer to this very question is option d that is 1 uno right 2 and 4 gangu so munno is a person is a character protagonist of kuli bakha is the protagonist of the novel untouchable and gangu is the protagonist of two leaves and a bud correct so kuli written by anand published in 1936 munno as the main character who is a young man who leaves his village for the employment and how he suffers right at the age of 14 and how he dies out for you know dies out of tuberculosis this can also be a question which can be framed that how munno died right then untouchable 1935 first novel by anand presents a day in the life of a sweeper or a toilet cleaner named bakha who was the son of lakha right third novel two leaves and a bud published in the year 1937 talks about the exploited gangu who is a peasant right whose wife dies of malaria wife named sajni dies of malaria the disease we talk about here and he was killed while trying to save his daughter from being raped by a british colonial officer so his daughter's name was leela and the colonial officer who tried to rape his daughter was reggi correct so this is what we were supposed to do in this very concept video which was all and all related to mulkrajna in some other videos we'll be bringing forward some other writers some concepts as well so stay tuned for more i'll see you again have a good day and keep on preparing for the net examination i'll see you again thank you so much and bye bye